All right, in this uh, kind of video, I want to cover some of the translation uh, kind of extras or options that we have um, kind of within our ESS portal. So a lot of this, uh, what I'm going to show today is primarily was added with version 4.2. Um, and, and really kind of just to show this a little bit, so let me go and create a, uh, a new incident. It's going to report a new incident. Here is my incident having issue with, oops, make sure I spell things right, with my laptop. All right, so I'm going to submit this. So I've got an incident ticket, and I can make some updates here. Here is a commentary update for, from customer. All right, so I can make some updates here. Now what I want to highlight here is that <clears throat> If I were to look at this particular record, you know what what you'll what you'll find on the ServiceNow side is that these fields, like your short description field, these are not translatable text fields. You're not storing multiple different language versions of the short description or the description field. And same for the activities; these are basically stored in how they're entered in in this particular case English values. So that if I were to, say, change my language to Spanish, for example, you're going to see the labels for these fields change, but the actual content within the values of these fields is not changing, right? So you're seeing um, English versions of those comments that were added um, and, and not translated to the local language, the logged on user. All right, so what we've done to kind of remedy that situation is a couple of things. One is at the card object record level, so take incident for example. On these attributes, so you can take this long description attribute as an example, or if I look at the uh, uh, this description map from that short description attribute, you'll find a new field here called translate values. Now <clears throat> what's going to happen here is that when I go and I ask for the incident record and it compiles uh, into this JSON object that then returns back through the portal to display to me as a consumer, if it has this checkbox in conjunction with under our language properties, there's a way to tie in or define here's my uh, translation engine that I want to use, in this case Google. We have also have Bing in here as well as an option that you can put a, a Bing a, a web service key in here to go do the translate through Bing or through Google. If we have this and this is checked as it's querying the record and building kind of the output that we're going to display to the user, if my language is set for Spanish, it's going to take whatever values in this field and translate it to um, Spanish and, and to kind of detect what the source language is to do the translation from the to to the from. So the end result is, so if you take for example this, if I switch my language back to Spanish and let's go to the list first and talk about, uh, there's kind of two parts of this I want to cover. So one on the list side, <clears throat> if we show my incidents, you'll notice that my newest created incident that I had out here, this was my ticket. Um, this has now been translated to Spanish. So that's happening kind of on the compilation or the query side of uh, building this list is that it's using that translate values checkbox, using the translation web service to go take whatever values in that field, create the translated version of that. Same for the most recent update. It's creating kind of the translation value of that um, as an output. So in my list, I'm seeing everything kind of in my local language. Now the next level of this is if I click in and see view details, <clears throat> so that's kind of the server side. Then we have some uh, what I consider client side. This is a directive. So on kind of the display of this content as I'm looking at the detail of it, a couple things that are happening here is this is my description. It's kind of retranslating that. <clears throat> it's also taking any of the journal entries, logs that I've got and translating those as well. And you know, it's an interesting example if I come in here and I say um, here is my newest update <clears throat> and I'm writing this in English but yet my local language is set for Spanish. The interesting thing you'll find here is that I entered that but it's immediately on display translating that to my language. So it's it's going to store whatever I've typed in this case in English value but it's going to then display to me <clears throat> in my local language of Spanish the translated value. Now um, I'll highlight here, let me switch to uh, English so I can read this. And let me show you kind of the uh, directive part. So I have the translate flag, that's one option. 
Um, in this ticket conversations, you'll see there's a reference to a dependency for EVG Translate. Uh, and basically, it's a pretty simple output template um, that has kind of a loading thing, and I'll show you there's a property for that of whether you want to show kind of on loading. And then uh, the translated text, it will highlight that um, the wrapper around the translated value has a class of translated text. So if you want to format it or you want to um, apply some jQuery on top of it, there is some, uh, there's a key that we're applying there. Um, you'll notice there is a, if this is HTML, we'll do kind of a bind and render the HTML content. Um, if it's not HTML, we'll just basically show that translated text. But so the options, I'll kind of, you know, kind of show you the functions in here. Um, there is a, a passing in of, is this, <coughs> are we doing uh, kind of the, the output value? What's the to language? What's the from language? Um, there's some uh, properties you're looking at attributes of, are we showing the loading? Um, are we doing this in HTML? What's the from language? And then ultimately there's a function here that does a do translate, which uh, does a post to go get that translated value with the parameters of being the source language, target language, and, um, and source text that's being translated and then returns back basically that text. So that's kind of, um, in essence, the directive that is defined to do the translation. The way this is implemented on the page is you'll find the directive looks something like this, EVG translate to language, whatever the logged on user language is, the text that they're writing and there's a show loading aspect here. You'll grow down here, you'll also notice that it's basically the same kind of option here. Do the directive, um, here's the text, oops, here's the text value that we want to translate. Show loading and this one actually has the possibility to have HTML uh, comments so we also have this HTML equal to true which just handles how it's going to uh, basically treat the output as if it could contain HTML components so if it does we'll render those as well. So that's uh, basically kind of what's been set up as far as uh, translation, uh, both the directive and then kind of the server side. Uh, the dependencies on here are two part. One, you've got to have multiple languages uh, activated in your environment for um, it to care about doing translation. And then two, as I noted before, uh, defining the uh, translation engine that you want to use for uh, doing either on the server side, translating those values or on the client side directive uh, on display showing those different uh, output translated values for the user. Hope this was helpful and uh, appreciate the time.